Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back. We're going to finish up our little lampshade tonight. I did all the base coating, so we're going to start putting our shading and highlighting and the details. First thing we need to do is, this is just an undercoating, so our snow isn't looking very white, so we need to make that white. But the first thing we want to do is put our shading in. If you look... It's kind of subtle, but it's just around the areas, and then I stippled on top. So I'll show you how I did that. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to skip the uh, milk chocolate. She has us doing it with two colors. I'm just going to go in with, um, this is actually Asphaltum, Asphaltum. Asphaltum. It's kind of the closest thing I had to burnt umber at the moment. I have burnt umber. It's around here somewhere. I'm going to float. So what you want to do, I'm going to give you a little reminder of floating. I'm using my angle brush. And hopefully you can see. Okay, so my water source is here. Here's my paint, my palette paper. And this is a, five, a 3 8 inch angle. Water blot on my paper towel, corner load, so you can see I have a tiny bit of paint right there, and I'm just going to start putting it down, and let's see what we have. The darkest color to the left, and it kind of fades down into water, and you can kind of see the bubbles. I never really want to get this side of the brush into the paint. So you want to, that's how, and I can add a little more color. Stay right there. And I kind of go back and forth a little, but you don't want to get paint here. Only water. And I like that. Now I'm on paper, so I need a little extra moisture. And I'm just going to take this color and I'm going to go around the birdhouse. So. I'm going to stick the corner where the color is and see how nice and wet that is because on paper it's going to, the paper is sucking up all that color. I'm going to run out of uh, water, but I actually turned the corner. I need to, I'm going to reload. So I just went back into my water blot, corner load, and do the same thing on my palette. And basically whatever you have going on on your palette paper is what you're going to get when you go to your piece. Well, after a while. I am a little bit more advanced, but um, if, it's n if it's like a stripe on your palette paper, it's going to look like a stripe when it gets over here. So as long as you see a graduation of color, if it goes from dark to light to bubbles, they're a little bit dark, the bubbles. So I probably have some color over there. But the idea is, and then when I go to the piece, I put the color toward where I want it the darkest. I put the point of the brush to where I want it the darkest. I don't have words tonight, evidently. It's been a long day. I've had a good day, though. Very good day. And I just went right back to my, um, to, to pick up some more color, I just went right back to the, I call it a runway. And I'm just going to pull that around there. So now you can kind of see, now this, see that's super dark, which is okay. We're going to stipple on top of it anyway with white. So it's just underneath to kind of give the illusion of a little bit of shading and highlight. So I'm going to put some here where this branch, it would be dark under here. So I'm sticking the darkest there and I'm just going to go out like that. I got some on the branch, that's okay. I'm going to put a little bit under here, and actually I think this is all going to get covered with um, white anyway, but it would be dark there because the bird would cast a shadow. Remember I said, this isn't realistic, but it is true to life-ish type thing, I'm just thinking. So I'm going to go on this side of these snowballs. And I could probably, see she didn't do all this, but I'm so, I don't want to say anal, but 
because I know that there would be oops and that's super dark and what I've been doing if I put too much paint I just take a paper towel and like blot it and then you can pick it up kind of quick um, for his face I'm really just going to go around his nose a little bit because he's going to get cheeks and these are super bright I think I might calm it down a little bit on on this one I don't know if I want them as bright as that I might take it down a shade um, or maybe I like it I think I just used the true red or whatever the country red but I think she actually had us she wanted to use um, red iron oxide and the rebel in me said nope I'm using what I have <laughs> so I'm still using the same color and see how I turn the darkest where I want the darkest color and then I swivel my brush as I go so I got a little shadow around his nose and I think oh the snowballs because I think this is the same color that I'm going to use to shade the branch so this is going to be I'll just use it on the branch too but I want to do the snowballs so behind if this snowball is behind that little twig it would be darkest up against well let's see this snowball is in behind this snowball so I'm just gonna go like that and then maybe a little along the bottom of this one and like I said all this is gonna get covered up let's let's do our branch I might I'm gonna go to a my my favorite because I just don't want to keep reloading and I know that this holds a lot of water because it's long and it's getting beat up but I can add water to it oops dirty water because I didn't clean my water and look how it comes right back to a chisel this is an American painter and I've had it forever and it has lasted me and that's why I don't know something about it I just really love and it holds a ton of paint and water so I'm going to start at this end and put the dark color along the bottom and I'm going to like kind of push but all these bristles even though it's an angle brush all the bristles need to be on the surface because I need them the water too and I just went right back to that runway that I created and I'm just picking up more darker color and when we base coated it remember I said um, it doesn't have to be smooth because this way it'll look more um, round because it'll have different texture what if it has bark and you know along the top see I just got brown here I, you probably can't see it because I'm not in the shop this is going to get snow on top but because I switched to my bigger brush see I made a little shadow of dark I forgive me though it's gonna be fine once I actually I found some tea lights and it looks super cute so I'm happy um, sticking with the bottom and you can I have a little water right here it's gonna help in this case wetter is better because um, it's paper so I'm I'm purposely making my brush a little bit wetter I'm just gonna put a little bit down this little twig and a little bit over here and you can kind of notice a little difference not too much over here I'm gonna darken up a little right here all right here because I like to see the difference in color all right and then while we're at it let me see about that uh, little um, birdhouse wood grain lines with milk and shade it with milk chocolate and it says deepen with burnt umber so I'm just gonna do it with burnt umber same color I'll go back to my smaller brush oh and we're gonna do little um, wood grain lines so again I like to thin down my paint so I'm gonna pull a little puddle over here 
and just add a little water to it and thin it down a little so that it has the consistency of ink. And load my brush. And then just make like little, and all of this stuff is on your original drawing. She puts in all those details for you so you don't have to think at all. <laughs> this is my favorite, see? So she has all these little lines on there so they're perfectly, you don't have to guess. And when you use a brush like this, if you flatten it out, like when I load it, and if I flatten it out, you'll get a really thin, it'll make thin lines. So I'm just going to put, I'm just skimming the tip of the brush along the paper. And just make some wood grain lines. I'll let that dry a little bit because we're also going to make little twigs that are going to be, actually, you know what, maybe we'll do the, um, you yeah, know, we got to do the white first. I want I need to add, I think, not avocado, but maybe celery green or he has a little stripe of green on his scarf. And I'm just checking to see what she used. It really doesn't matter. I must be reading the wrong thing. Yeah, green scarf. No. <clears throat> I am. Sorry, here it is. Uh... How's her light green? I'm sorry. I told you, it's been a long day. So it's just this green. I mean, it's not too far off. This is celery, though. I like this a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to use the, that flat brush, the smaller flat. So this is a number four. And I'm going to paint in little stripes kind of close again using the tracing so it's kind of along here and I'll put another one over here Oops. I have my q-tip yesterday's q-tip but if, the, if it's nice and wet you can take it off and you can always go over your black lines at the end, which I kind of decided I made a little another one. Look, I made the K-Cat one. And I actually did all my pen, my ink work at the end. I didn't do any of it in the beginning. I just used the tracing and painted it as I normally would. And then I um, went around everything with the black pen. Um, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to let, give those a second to dry because now I'm going to come back and shade my birdhouse. Really it's just under the roof, so up here and kind of around the bottom. That's all. I mean I could get crazy and really go up against this, the um, hole. That little heart is actually the hole where the bird goes in, but we could just go. So I'm putting the color up against under the roof and down this side and then I'm just gonna now when I, I love doing this because you're just gonna follow that um, curve I think I had color on the water side because I I'm using the same runway that I used for the bigger brush and okay but you're gonna go like this so not like this, all those bristles need to be on the surface. So you put it down and just start. I like to pick up and pull, I'll kind of coax that water around. And I do feel like I want to go a little bit next to the, just a little bit right here. That's all. And also, up here to give it a little dimension and do I need it anywhere else I think that's it how about that green stripe is it opaque it's pretty opaque there's gonna be um, some little X's but I'm gonna come back and just darken it a little bit more and
I really want to finish one thing. We got to do, before we do the carrot, we're going to finish our snowman. So now that we're done that, I'm going to stipple. Stippling, I actually have this brush, which it's called a stippler. It kind of reminds me of a stencil brush, and I've never really tried to do it with a stencil brush. I'm going to come up for a minute. Like, okay, oh geez. So basically, I'm, I'm looking for my stencil brush. This is actually um, Tracy Moreau's stencil brush, so it isn't truly flat. She's got some motion going on here. It's got like two levels because she stencils um, through um, stencils a lot. She doesn't just dry brush with it. You know, she goes through an actual cutout stencil. The other kind I have is a um, stip. This is a stippler. This is a dry brushing. Let's see what this is called. This is the silver coal dry brush blending. So this is for like dry brushing a cheek on or something like that but stippling is different and I gotta clean that anyway so I have bigger stipplers too so it's you cut that completely flat so maybe you could make a stippler if you cut it completely flat I don't know I'm gonna use this little one because I I maybe I'll use this one All right and we're gonna use um white like titanium white or snow white or whatever you have and I will show you I'm not the best at it. I'm not, sh I haven't done it enough to be really, really super proficient to know exactly. Um, not a lot of projects call for it, so it's, you don't do it as often as other things, but when you load the brush, you just, you don't need paint all up in here. You only need paint on the tips because basically you're gonna load your brush and then you're just gonna stipple it and it's gonna leave and I didn't even do it that, and I covered it with um, the, the uh, I almost said stickles, the glitter anyway. So don't worry about it. I mean, you're going to get paint on there, and it kind of gives it a little rough and bumpy feel to it. So I'm going to take this brush, no water, and just go right into that puddle, straight on. And then I'm going to move away from that puddle, and just work it into the tips a little bit. Work it off and in. So now you can really see, oops, that the bristles are kind of coming apart. So now I'm going to come over to my piece, and I don't, don't go too hard. Really just tap the surface. So you just want to barely touch it and see the effect I get. It's little stipples. It's just little, like, dots. So I'm going to start on his head, and I'm going to start to the outside edge. Um, kind of come in but don't go up against because we'll cover up all that shading we did you can't even see because it's white but look he looks snowy and I'm not going to reload yet let's see what I can get out of the snowball I want it to be brightest on the edge and leave a little shading so bright here and kind of come in. I think these turned out better than my first one because I think I used the smaller brush on my first one. And I'm just going to keep going until I run out of paint. But basically, stay away from all the places that we shaded. So like right down the side here. And then... Jenny's biting her nails. That's so funny. So right down the side, and then leave that little shading area. I'm going to go a little closer. And I probably should have not painted the um, birdhouse yet. That's going to get snow on it anyway. But that looks cool. But see how that this doesn't look real polka dotty, like speckly? It's like more, um, I probably, you know, like this looks more speckly. He looks cool though. He looks fluffy and white. Oh, I'm excited. And guess what? We're going to put little um, 
fir tree little, what are they called, pine needles. Oh man, this is too exciting. So yeah, I'm going to put, this is called the Low Cornell DM Stippler. 3 8 inch this one is. I think I have three different sizes. I have a much bigger one and then that little one. This is a, I can't see the number but it's smaller. All right, so that is good. I'm going to leave, I don't know, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go ahead and put this in water because you don't want the paint to dry in there. And I'm leaving it on the birdhouse too because I don't mind. I think, no, I'm going to leave it on everything. I'm leaving it because it's snow. And I'm going to, we want to finish him. He. Let me just stick with snowman. Deepen the shading, stipple the snowman with white, paint the twigs on the head and arms with burnt ember, and paint the little um, pine needles. So, and then it says, use a wash of red iron oxide for um, his cheeks. And then it says, deepen shading with a wash of country red. And I just went straight in with country red, and that's why. Um, what about his nose? Let's see. Base the carrot canyon orange shade with oxblood, which I do not have oxblood. I have this color, which is called heritage brick. So I'm going to shade his nose with heritage brick and oof, make the thin lines with russet, which is another like dark red. So I'm just going to use this and thin brush. My paint was kind of a little um, gloppy, so I'm adding water. And for the carrot, look, you can see on here, see the little um, carrot lines? So just gently this brush isn't as thin as I would like but it, it'll look carroty don't worry and then I'm gonna put his um, arms on with the brown the dark brown which I used as faultum but you can use burnt umber and I'm just gonna follow here so look so it starts kind of right under his, and you just go out like that. You could trace it on, but I think it's fine. It goes behind the little bird's nose over to like right here. So the line goes down here. And then he's holding on to this birdhouse. So. And I'll probably do two coats because it looks a little sheer. Oh, and I'm not in the shot. But I just basically followed the, um, I'll go up a little because I hate when I come out of the shot. Um, I just followed her, her tracing. That's for, you know, and you could trace it on, but it's not that big a deal if you wing it. So this one starts kind of like right here. And then it kind of swizzles over. It's a little bendy. And then a little finger comes over here. And then there's a finger down here. This isn't the best pointy brush. But I told you we'd be able to do everything with um, these really cheapy craft smart brushes. And put a finger there and a finger here. Um, and then he has little hair. So I'm going to do the same thing up here. Really try to keep this light but there's one I'm gonna go down a little bit I'm just following this tracing so you're gonna put one I really want to use my I have a, a little bit of a better liner brush I just okay I can I can um hopefully Jenny stop biting your nails she's got to get groomed that looks kind of thin. And then there's like a bendy one that goes down over his forehead. And then there's another bendy one. And then they just kind of poke out. There's a B. And there. And you, I mean, why do we have to do it where she says it? It's just because um, I like to copy. I, I learned how to paint by copying someone else's work and it's just worked for me. I like it. It, it. 
it makes it easy to relax and be calm in here. There's also um, some, we're going to make some here, but I'll leave that. I mean, you could do some here too. We'll do it in a minute. All right, so let me finish shading my nose. I'm just going to use that same color, which is, I forget now, Heritage Brick, I think it's called. So it's like a brown, a, a brownish red, that's all. I love candy bar. Russet is a good color, but I'm just putting it here. And like maybe down here. So a browner one would would have looked better, I think. It's a little too red. But that looks carroty. And then um what we gotta do is eyes. I think I might touch up. Now I'm fine. Um, alright, I I keep what color do I, is the bird um, shaded with black plum? So the red is shaded with black plum. That's cool. I'm sure I could have shaded that carrot with black plum and it would look just fine. So I'm just going to do a little float. Again, I just quarter load, blot, and then blend it on your palette. And I'm just going to put a little bit to make, um, I'm going to make little tail feather marks. Um, and he has a little wing that's just sitting like this. Oops, and I got it here. Does that look like a wing? Kind of. It looks good enough. I could put a little behind his head. Um, and then I'm going to shade the beak just a little tiny bit up against his face. And we're going to give him eyes and all that. But we can add the snow. So the titanium white, you're just going to actually, let's put our, um, I need black green. And I'm going to use that green that I just used, the Hauser Light and Black Green. I love black green. I used to really love to float with this color, like when you're making grass darker or something. So I'm putting a little bit of black green out. And on your liner brush, and this is, a, I think, a number one, a 10 slash zero. Water and make a little puddle, an inky puddle, with the black green. And then I'm going to rinse and then blot, and then load my brush from that inky puddle. And you're just going to make, try and make tiny little, um, I'm going to turn my piece because it's going to be easier for me to pull. My brush is toe up too. It's not looking great. Um, but these are little, what are they called? Fur um, needles, pine needles. So you just need a few on each side because then we're going to add some of those lighter green ones and it's going to pop. I think if, if it looks see-through, maybe it's too much water. You don't want it too wet because you want them nice and dark. What's up, babe? Oh, okay, because, oof. Thanks, Joe. Okay. It's going to get mad. I forgot. Okay, babe. See, then I get, I start to get hasty and my lines get fatter because it's really nice when you make, I always couldn't wait till I got to the details and all that stuff. It's so fun when you start putting the details on. So right here, I'm going to put some, I don't think it called for it on her pattern, but I thought, why not? I can add some there and then we're going to add some here. Everybody likes taking my car. My car is awesome. I have a little um, Kia Soul. Oh boy, that was thick. But that's okay. I'll put a little by the cardinal. Kind of sticking out all different ways. Anywho, <clears throat> it's just such, it's so easy to 
to drive and everything and it's um, raining out so it has a lot of windows and nice vision <clears throat> so you can make like one two three little little things of three one two three but yeah they're kind of sheer um, do I want to put them anywhere else nope let's come back with the lighter green so I'm going to do again border on my brush and go right in and make a little puddle out of the green with the mix of water to make it more inky because it won't glide off the bristles if it's too thick um, and this is Hauser Hauser light what's it called Hauser green light I don't know where they come up with these names but you know. And so let's go back up top to his little hairdo. And just, you don't want to cover every dark green one you did. So just stick a light green one here and there. So just did it, gives it a little more pizzazz. But I, I always couldn't wait to get to the details. Prep is my least favorite. Prep is like no fun. Like sanding the piece, getting it ready, sealing it, all that stuff. Um, of course. And then, I mean, base coating's okay. But really, I love sitting down once everything's base coated and coming in and floating. Oh, yeah. That's just like today. This was what I got to do today. Just sit down and just start adding the details, the darks and the lights and it starts to come to life the shading and highlighting and the eyes <laughs> oops try just to use the tip of the, the little tip like the pen like you're holding a pen really don't push too hard because then your lines come out thicker when you push down oops, I don't want to put my hand in wet paint doesn't that look pretty? I think so. One, two. So if I put three little sprinkles on the dark green, I'll just put like two sprinkles. One, two, one. So cute. Uh, he needs a face, doesn't he? I don't think there's any highlighting on there. I didn't put, oh, we didn't do his cheeks. So let me put his cheeks. But there's, see, there's snow inside the hole. There's snow on top of the branches and all along the twigs and everything. Um, and then we'll do the scarf. The nose is pretty, and there's snow on his nose. But let's do his um, cheeks. And I'm going to use, she said red iron oxide. Maybe I'll try that russet first. And I'm going to try a smaller brush and not really go crazy with the brightness. We shall see how it goes. So I'm backing off. I just backed off of that color. And really, I have hardly any. Well, for me, that's bright. That looks cute. Oh, that's subtle. I like it. But see how it's subtle? Oh yes, look at this one. This one is way too bright. I just like that little subtleness. OMG, okay, now we need to give them some eyes. I'm gonna get my black. I think tomorrow, um, I am gonna go to Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna get me a new bottle of black. I'm gonna get a couple different, Ugh. Because this one, oh, I got it. I have, I have plenty. It's just in this big bottle with a broken lid. Um, I'm going to use that number one, the Craft Smart number one, just to put some eyes and eyebrows. Look, you can see. Well, he doesn't have eyebrows. He just has eyes. But you could put eyebrows. See, look, look at my cat. Cat has eyebrows. 
He's so cute. Oh my goodness. See, that's why I love um, Renee's work. It's so cute. It just makes me happy. And they're kind of turned to the side a little. Like that. And I'll put um, a little white dot in there too. And we're going to put a little white dot for his cheeks. I'm just going to touch up this roof. I just feel like if I clean it up, it'll look like it's in front of him more. Him or her. Could be a her. Um, where else is there black? Nowhere, really. Just on our little bird. And the little birdie gets eyes too and that is a white or off white or whatever but I have white out so I'm just gonna go right into that white and put a little eye right there and he has a little white dot on each cheek and I'm gonna really try to just use the tip of my brush to get that little highlight, the twinkle in his eye. You can go blind trying to see this stuff, I swear. OMG, he looks so cute. While I have that white, I'm gonna take my bigger liner brush that it's actually a number three round in the Craft Smart. So I'm gonna take this brush and get it wet and create let me bring my paint over here. I'm making a puddle with a little bit of water in it, but I'm really loading my brush up kind of gloppy. Oop, where am I? Gloppy. It's nothing neat because I'm going to do a twirly way to add the snow. So I'm going to put it down behind this little birdie's butt and kind of twist it and let my brush wiggle and because the background stop curb because the background isn't painted you're not able to see it but this is where you're going to add your, oh boy your glitter so I'm going to make a see where I have right here is that little um area where it I got brown on the white right here I'm going to just put a pile of snow like right in there and just kind of let my brush roll along the top of it. I don't, it, yeah, <laughs> James just yelled at them. They bark at nothing. I don't know who of you have dogs, but they just are crazy. They really are crazy. I'm going to put, um, let me just go right here. Um. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I am in the shot because I'm upside down, but I like it to be kind of thicker in the, like right here where that, I put brown paint. I'm just making it thick and then I pick up and then you kind of come up. It would be up there, but then it gets deeper, like right where that paint is. I'm, and that's in the back anyway. So it might be up here and a little up here, a little along the roof. And on this side, try not to stick your hand in the wet paint if you can. It happens. There's a little bit in the corner of it just gathered right here because this is a hole. It's an opening. And so I'm just going to make a little pile of snow. And there's going to be snow on top of his nose. I'm going to use a smaller brush. I just, I want it to be a little, a little bit more controlled. So like, something like that, and I'm going to come back with my black pen and like spruce it up a little bit. 
one way to check too if you want to is you can use this so see if you look at oh her picture see I put way more snow in my hole um, there's a little bit of snow in there in the pine pine needle things um, and that's it I think he's looking super handsome but um, there's a little black spot on the sun today that sting right here it's a perch and we have to finish the scarf and then we're done um, so for the scarf he has little um, we're going to shade the scarf with Payne's Gray, and I think, I thought I, no, I put out Plum, didn't I? Payne's Gray is another great color, and I only have it in Deco Art, but it's basically a dark, dark blue. But it's like a black blue. I don't know why they call it Payne's Gray. It's so weird. And again, I'm just going to shade where there would be shadows. So behind to make it look like things are overlapping and like anywhere it would be you know not in the forefront so kind of around the carrot I would shade under like right here because this part is folded over that part doesn't that look so pretty on that whatever violet color OMG And then I really, I want to go, I'm going to walk it off my, I have to take it off. Like I'm a heavy, I'm a heavy hand and I load a lot of paint. So I need to control myself sometimes. I just want to pick up a little bit because I don't want to overwhelm. Right here, I just want to go up this side of the scarf, but I don't want it to be all the way over, you know. But that would be behind. And I think I'll go along this side as well. I'm going to get a little more water so that it moves. And just kind of pull a little shading on that side of the scarf. Just kind of stop it there. But it really gives it depth or, you know, a little bit of dimension, right? And underneath the, um, I'm so sorry. I told you I move my piece a lot because it it helps me get the angle that I want to get. And there's other stripes. It says um, shade with paint gray, highlight with a brush mix of sand and pansy lavender. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. Base coat the wide stripe with. Hauser light green shade down the left side of the Hauser light green stripe with avocado. We're fine. I already did it in the paint gray. Paint the thin stripes with Hauser medium green and gingerbread alternating. And I didn't have gingerbread, so let's see what I used. I ended up just using that same green. I don't know what gingerbread was. It seems like it would be a brown, but I, I just alternated, and it looks great. So I'm going to use the same green and uh, what? Does that, it looks like this this red or something. Yeah, I think it's the the um, russet or heritage brick. Because I think I wanted to tie in the red over here and pull it up there. So that's what I went with. And because I've done mixed media and all that stuff and tried to create designs for myself, now I'm a lot braver and I just go for it. I don't get worked up over it. <laughs> I'm just going to make lines right now. So I'm getting my little liner brush, getting the paint thin, and I just don't want to put my, and I'm going to outline that. You need enough water on your brush. And oops, I got it in the white. The white is near the red on my palette paper. And then it's going to be green, red, green, oopsie, tell it just, there's white right there. Uh, green, red, green, so red, green. 
I just try to not make them touch. And then I think it goes, yeah, down this too. So red, green, red, green, red. I'm just leaving enough space for um, a green stripe. I have plenty of green out here. And just put green and I don't even really fit, have to finish the stroke because it's just a little extra detail that you know no one's really gonna notice and I think there's little like X's on there it looks like they're dark I'm gonna make them in this um, black green and there's just three X's so I'm just gonna go X I started with the center and just did my best and on this side I'm just gonna put that um, I think we're done but I think I am gonna take that white out of here um, yep so now we can uh, add the glitter and I was thinking let me pull up I have painted lampshades before let me go get this one I'm not prepared and this is old and dusty but, oh, and it doesn't even have it. This one actually has things printed on the inside, painted on the inside too. And when you turn the light on, they shine through the butterflies. But I've done them where I cut um, things. So I might cut, because I don't know, I'm debating. But here's, here's what I mean. So I have this um, punch. A snowflake punch and I was thinking if I just like went along the top like maybe even just did three of them I'm gonna go for it I'm just gonna go for it so I'm just pushing it all the way in and it's watercolor paper so it's not like the easiest to punch and then I'll do one over here kind of in the same area and then I'll do two more how's that these are perfect little snowflakes to use for a project. I could actually do one. If I I could just do, I don't know. I should have thought this through though, but because I just don't want it to look wonky. But it isn't a big deal because it's basically a free decoration. But I really just wanted to see if this, um, all right, good enough. I like it. I'm very excited that I did that, that I was brave and I should save these little snowflakes. Um, because the tea light actually did work. Um, so I'm going to take, this is called Glitterific by Folk Art. And it doesn't really shake. It's kind of really thick. So all I did was, you know, before I do that, let's take, I have the, uh, the Suk Wang double stick tape. Actually, I want to sign it. See, I'm, for whatever reason, I'm starting to rush for some, for no reason at all. Um, and just, I'm just going to go over some of the areas that I think need to be brought back to life like the I want this snowballs to show up um, the side of his body is a little I just want him to show up maybe around his head too and I think the birdies beak And around the bottom and around the house I just can't see that well when I 
when my hand is in my way, so I'm um, turning the piece. And this is just personal preference. I just thought it needed to be brought back a little bit. Cool. All right. Um, and maybe around the scarf right here. And right here. But I love it. It's so cute. All right. And then I'm going to show you with the tea light. Okay. So I wanted to do that. And I think... <clears throat> so this is the Glitterific. And I just took the brush. Like maybe my small flat brush and just pick some out of there it's really thick and just put it down on my palette paper and I just kind of paint it on there not really it's kind of like stickles it just reminds me of stickles now, I don't think it's glue I think it's considered paint but um, has really kind of big flakes in it big um, glitter flakes or whatever they're called and it gives it oh it gives it a um, a shiny look too so even if it's not glittery it's shiny and you know if the sun's hitting that snow out there it's very sparkly and I just think it makes it look so cute and festive I love adding glitter to everything now or if I can especially holiday stuff I love blinging out all my holiday decorations the shinier the better so how's that look and you can um, put it down his nose so all along the branches stickles would work just fine too I just happened to have this it was five bucks I don't know what I was thinking. I just felt, you know, like I had to buy it and probably didn't even look at the price. I just grabbed it and, and never imagined that it would be $5 for that little bottle of paint. And you don't have to be um, real careful, you know, just glop it on if you want to. Um, Ooh. yeah it doesn't have a squirt bottle and this is what I oh darn it I meant to put the double stick tape on before I did this because it's going to take a little extra time for this to dry but I can turn the camera off and I'll come back and finish it up but I hope you guys love it. I love it. I think it's so adorable. And I can't wait to show you what it, what it looks like with the um, cutouts. And I don't know if I should have done that. You know what? Let me put a few on the bottom. I'm just going to go all in with this. Should I go offset or exact? I'm going to go offset. I'll be I'll come back and I'll show you um, how to glue it all right it's I've used my heat tool and I should have backed off these and put them a little closer to the edge but I just ended up pushing it all the way up against the, the punch thing but I think it's gonna be good all right so you're gonna take your Sook Wang and I just turn it over I also signed my name and put the date 2019 I'm going to Yeah, I'm going to put it down the inside. At, it doesn't matter. I put it on the outside and the inside. Right along the edge. And this type of tape actually rips, but I do cut it. But let's say, oop, it ripped. Perfect. And you're going to take your um, bone folder and just adhere it on there. And then peel this off. The 
trickiest part. And then what I try and do is just put this edge up against the other side of the tape. So you just use your crafty ways to do this, all right? So I think I'm going to lay this down and go this way. You got to kind of be able to see, so I got to go this way. Okay. Kiwi, stop! So something like that. And then just... You can take the bone folder. And I'm pretty on point. I mean, you can't really tell, but I, I did a pretty good job. And sometimes you get a little knot, like a little... um like something like that. You can just cut that off. That's what I've done. I did it on the other ones. But you don't have to. Just kind of make it blend a little bit. But look, I want what I want to show you is the da 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 the tea light. So here's the tea lights that I have. Don't know where I got them. I have different kinds, all different kinds. I'll show you. But this one actually Oh, it's like a little flame. This one is for in a pool. Like this can be put in a pool to like float around in a pool. And it kind of flickers. So I have both of these. And I hope I can show you this with the light off. Um, Alright, well that's lighting up. And let's see. I like it with the little snowflakes. Isn't that cute? So that's the one we just did. I love it. And so when you're not in the dark, you can see all that. I mean, you can see everything. It's so cute. And then this is what the other one looks like. This one's like a little bit brighter. But you can actually see through it, you know? But, like, if you wanted to cut out with your X-Acto knife, you could cut things out. Like, just make little lines and bend it, and, like, the beak might stick out or something, but it would just let extra light out. They're so cute. But these wine glasses are perfect. They're from um, Dollar Tree. All right, you guys. There it is. I love them. That's it. I'm going to come back next time. I'm going to be painting this little kitty cat on a magnet for you. So I'm going to do um, my other magnet. Where is he? I started painting him already onto a magnet. And I also got some, I found the porcelain. They're not porcelain. They are ceramic ceramic ornaments that I'm going to play with the alcohol ink. So I was talking about that in my other, and I found these, and they're only a dollar. So I got these. I got two or three round ones, and I thought I would do the design on this side because it has like embellish, um, embossing on that side. I thought I could just put the year. But they're a dollar. I got three round ones and two tree shapes because um, Teresa also did a um, video of just, she just puts random colors on here and it just looks gorgeous. So I am going to be playing with alcohol inks as well, but I am going to come back and finish up. I went and bought, this was at AC Moore. I did find the 90 pound watercolor paper. There's 15 sheets in here and I also... I have no clue where I put that little kitty cat. Um, this is terrible when I want to show you. Anywho, it's this one, but I'm going to do... Here he is. Sorry. He's under here. I started painting one to show you, but this is going to be a magnet. This little guy. All right, so more painting ahead. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.